Hello and welcome to the sixth part of my LegoPod app tutorial that can be used with Control Plus and Boost 2. And for this part, we need a hub with three ports, so we can't use the normal port up hub. We can either use the Move hub that has two included motors with a color and distance sensor, or the Control Plus hub with two motors, two external motors, and the color and distance sensor. In my case, I use the Control Plus option, but you can use a Move Hub too. And for this one, we will use tank steering. That means that we have one motor for the left wheel and one motor for the right wheel, so that we can control the direction it drives to by moving one wheel. There's also the option to have one motor for steering and one motor to drive, but we won't use that in this part. The color and distance sensor is in the front and looks at the bottom so that it can see the color of the line. Make sure that it has the right height and that it can detect the colors correctly. You can use this block that we already used in the last parts for that. And last part, I gave you the tip to think about which things the sensor can detect and it can only detect the color of the ground. That can be either red if it is on the line or yellow if it is on the floor. And now we have to think about what it should do when it's on the line and what it should do if it's near the line. Let's say that it's near the line, that it drove a bit too far, then we want it to move back to the line and you can see that that would be a right turn. I went to the second difficulty because here is a block that we can use to control bo both motors with one block, but you can also use two of these blocks. I will use power and not speed control because that works for all motors, but you can use speed control blocks too. This would be the same block for speed control if your motor supports speed control. And you have to put the motors in ports that are related to each other. So either one in port A and the other one in port B, or one in port C and the other one in port D. I will use A and B because for the move up from the LEGO Boost sets, it will be also A and B. And the color and distance sensor is on port D and the color gets displayed here. So here we want to turn left and let's say that it's on the line. Then we want to drive forward because it should stay on the line. Makes sense, doesn't it? Well, there's a bit of a trick. The problem is if we have a turn and then it drives a bit too far in the curve so that it kind of goes into the inside direction, then it will only move stri straight on the red line, although it won't stay on the red line and th then it will get into the cage. You can test that on your own. Simply draw, draw a line on the bottom, maybe with chalk, and then you can follow or try to follow this line. In my case, I use a piece of paper that was included in the LEGO Boost sets, but you can use everything else. Just have a line on the floor. You can use LEGO bricks and try to follow that line, although that might be a bit difficulty, or you can use some other kind of plate or map. You can put papers on the floor and try to drive around the corners of the paper. There are many ways to make such a line. Driving left and driving forward isn't really an option. And the trick for that is to drive between both lines. That means that we drive to the left if we see yellow and to the right if we see red. You have to think about that. You have to imagine what the hub would do if we run this program and then you can see that it would work. In my case, the motors are built into the set in the way that one has to drive forward in order to drive forward and the other one has to drive backwards in order to drive forward. So to make a left turn, I have to move the left motor with a speed of minus 25 the other doesn't have to move 
And for the other turn, I will have to move this one with a speed of positive 25. I could test that, run this block, the red block, then it drives a left curve, and when I drive the right block, it will drive the right curve. So it does what I said, and you have to test that, that it drives the curve that we want in both cases. Because depending on how you attach your motors and so on, we might not have to move them in different directions. This program would already work in most cases. However, I have very tight corners. They are 90 degree corners, and we have to make a bit of a workaround for that. So in my case, it wouldn't move strong enough into the curve, so it would lose the line. And the trick for that is to move the other motor in the opposite direction so that the turning radius gets smaller. So here I can select minus 10, here I can select 10. Here both values are negative and here both are positive, but they drive into the opposite direction because uh, that's how the model works. That's also the reason why here we have minus 25 and here we have 25. You can test this again on your own. I tested it and it works for me. And depending on your line, this might not even be required. So now you can test the program. I moved uh, to the right when it sees yellow and to the left when it sees when it sees red. But that can simply be fixed by uh, turning it around, or I could have moved the blocks around. So I could have moved this block here and that block there. It's very possible that it doesn't work in your case. And the reason for that is that this requires much fine tuning. So uh, you kind of have to learn how to debug this stuff, or you can try to debug it. You have to look what it does. You have to uh, make sure that you check the color that it detects. Maybe it doesn't detect the color correctly. Then you have to change the height of the sensor, or maybe you have to get better lighting or stuff like that. And uh, look and see how it behaves and try to figure out why it behaved like that. Because the reason why it behaved like that will always stand here and you just have to figure out what it does. That's not easy, but it's uh, very important in programming because debugging and finding mistakes is uh, very important. Because mistakes will happen, no programmer writes perfect programs. That was this part. In the next part, we will program a self-driving car. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part.